So we're going to do one of my favorite things right now, which is seated pigeon. And I just wanted to give you some alternatives. Um, some people can place their ankle up above their knee on the other leg, and their leg, their uh, shin, stays fairly perpendicular to the floor. Some people, the leg is up like this. They just don't have the external rotation, so they can't open it up. So this is, this is not going to do any good for the pose if your knee is up too far. So I'm going to give you these alternatives. And there's three different heights you can get to on this block. So I want you, um, if you want to try it, you can, but I want to explain it to you for those of you that need it on either one or the other or both sides. So the block is down, we'll put it widthwise, and it's pressing up against your right foot. Your left foot is going to come up onto the block and lay sideways. So your foot, in effect, is flexed. And then this is the lowest place that we use. Here, you can hold onto your knees and even lean forward with a straight back a little bit, and you can feel some stretching in that hip, okay? Now, if you want it a little bit higher, place the block on its side edge and put your foot on the side, and that raises it up a little bit higher. So everybody's different. So again, you can lean forward with a straight back, and feel that stretch. Or, if that's not high enough for you, you want a little bit more, take the block, set it on its end, and now the leg really comes in handy to support it. So you bring your foot up on the side, and it just normally pushes against it towards your leg, so everything's good. Now this is halfway up from the floor to the knee, so this, this is helpful for some people that just can't quite get the move they're looking for up at the top. And then again, you can keep your back straight, lean a little forward, and feel that pull. So I'll let you decide where you need to be with your foot, any of those places, or you can place your ankle up above the knee. And we'll do pigeon. That looks great. That's good for you. I remember last time you did that, too. Yeah, good. Good. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm really happy that you're using this. So this is really important because of that piriformis muscle it, that's connected to the front of our sacrum. It's a triangle bone. It's connected to the sacrum and it runs down through this hip full of muscles. <laughs> and it runs right down the center of the hip and it attaches to the upper thigh bone. And so what happens is, on many people, this gets tight due to whatever reason, the way they walk or stand or whatever. So that, and for me, it's a very common thing to happen to all of us. So what happens is the sciatica nerve runs right down through that muscle. And what happens when that muscle gets tight is the sciatica nerve gets squeezed. And I don't know how many of you have had sciatica pain ever? Yes? Yeah, I have. And so what happens is when you loosen that muscle, it gives the nerve room to breathe a little bit. But when it's tight, it presses on it and you can feel pain down your leg and elsewhere. So that's just really, that's why this pose is really important. So it's important to your pelvis to be in the right position, tilted forward, so you Tail feathers are Sherry's way of, a good way of giving you an image of how to sit. So fluff your tail feathers back, sit up nice and straight. Now you feel it, maybe. Maybe if you don't feel enough, keep your body straight and just lean forward from the hips a little bit until, okay, that feels warm, it feels colorful, but it's not painful. So. If it is painful or you're holding your breath, back up away from it and hold it there. Ah, yeah. 
So when I breathe into this, I like to use the image of, as I, breathe, as I inhale, imagining that as a nice, cool breeze, just wrapping itself around that stiff muscle. And as I exhale, I imagine the exhale as a broom sweeping away all the stiffness, all the roughness, all the tension in that hip. So take a couple of breaths on your own, using whatever imaging you, that resonates with you, and see if you can release a little of that tension. And then wrap your hands around your knee, sitting up, Bring the knee up close to your chest as you look over that same shoulder. And then come on back to center. Place that leg down, just down kind of on an angle. Stretch out the opposite leg and we'll do a counter stretch for that hip. So bring the back of your hand to the inside of that leg. And I like to put my hand on the side of my head to start because the elbow is going to reach up towards the ceiling as you exhale and let your hand move down the inside of your leg as far as feels comfortable to you. And then if you have no problem in this shoulder, you can reach your arm out so that your fingers are dangling above your toes that are outstretched. Take some deep breaths. Notice the sensations in your side back area and on your next inhale let that arm pull you up Ooh, and that should be a nice counter stretch to the work we've been doing on that one hip okay so let's balance it out with the other side now you might use the same brick situation with the other foot or it may be different so good you're going to, I remember now, you use it on that side. Everybody else put the ankle up, flex the foot, and your foot is naturally flexed because it's laying on its side. It's perfect for that. Take a look at your um, left leg too and make sure that that ankle is under your knee so you have good support. Ruffle your tail feathers back towards the chair. Sit up nice and straight and just feel the glow. We'll refer to it as the glow. <laughs> okay. And then if you want more glow, more color to your glow, just lean forward from your hips just a tiny bit. Or if that's too much, just back up away from it. So find your place. And then just sit and enjoy it and maybe experience that same release by imagining a cool breeze with your breath wrapping around that muscle and then exhaling, letting it sweep away the tension, the cobwebs, the roughness. I've always liked mountain streams, so that's what I picture. This is a really great pose you can do watching television, talking to a friend, waiting in a doctor's office. Nobody knows the glow you feel inside. And then come up softly, wrapping your hands around your knee, bringing it up towards your chest a couple of times and then holding it and looking over that same shoulder. <clears throat> and then come on back to center, place that foot down, stretch the leg, uh, the opposite leg out, and we're, we'll counterbalance that stretch. With your hand, the back of your hand against the leg, your other hand on your cheek or your head. They can inhale 
and exhale as your elbow moves up towards the ceiling and your fingers move down your leg and breathe into that side back area feeling the sensations and then inhale as you come back up good and do a few more of these and shield wipers.